Don't forget, you can reach the latest episode of Potomac Watch anytime. Just ask your smart speaker. Play the Opinion Potomac Watch podcast. That is, play the Opinion Potomac Watch podcast. From the opinion pages of the Wall Street Journal, this is Potomac Watch. Welcome back. I'm Paul Gigo with Kyle Peterson and Kate O'Dell. And we have a meeting tomorrow. White House President Biden uh, invited the big four congressional leaders in both houses of Congress, including Kevin McCarthy, to the White House talk about the debt ceiling. But so far, as they posture to come up to this meeting, neither side is giving much ground. You have uh, Kevin McCarthy and the House have passed a bill to raise the debt ceiling, $1.5 trillion into 2024, in return for some limits on the growth of spending and some other reforms, but the White House is still demanding that they pass a clean debt ceiling, meaning nothing at all attached to it, increase. The House Republicans say, hey, hey, wait a minute, we passed this. Up to you to negotiate. Let's listen to Patrick McHenry, a leader of the Republican Conference Chairman of the Financial Services Committee. The president did not think we could pass a plan out of the House, so therefore he said it's a clean debt ceiling or nothing. And so debt, a clean debt ceiling is now off the table with Republicans in the House and Senate saying, time to negotiate between the Speaker and the President. That's all we're saying. The Speaker's not laid down a red line. Uh, those, that's been done in previous iterations of the debt ceiling by Democrats and Republicans in, in the legislative branch. He had, didn't do that. There are no red lines other than the fact that we must address our fiscal house at a time where federal spending is up 40 percent from pre-COVID levels. I think it's a reasonable thing for us to do. All right. Reasonable thing for us to do. No red lines. But Janet Yellen says there is a line. The Treasury Secretary, let's listen to her. Our priority is, is to make sure that Congress does its job. There is no way to protect um, our financial system and our economy other than Congress doing its job and raising the debt ceiling and enabling us to pay our bills. And we should not get to the point where we need to consider whether the president can go on uh, issuing debt. This would be a constitutional crisis. It's Congress's job to do this. If they fail to do it, we will have an economic and financial catastrophe that will be of our own making. And um, there is no action that President Biden uh, and the U.S. Treasury can take to prevent that uh, catastrophe. Catastrophe, catastrophe, hellfire and damnation. Kate, what's the Biden calculation here? It's not without risk for the administration to play this brinksmanship if it expects that the House Republicans will break. Maybe they won't. Yeah, Paul, I have to admit to seeing some cynicism in this strategy. She's basically saying here that if the House Republicans don't do what Biden says, they'll create a constitutional crisis themselves. I mean, we've talked on this podcast about how the debt ceiling is in some ways an invented ceiling because Janet Yellen could prioritize debt payments. The federal government has a lot of revenue coming in the door on a regular basis. And that it is not the kind of impending catastrophe she's describing for the Biden administration's own political gain. So obviously they're banking on the House Republicans getting spooked by this and caving, but I'm not sure that's where this is heading. And the reason for that is because For once, Republicans have made a coherent, reasonable offer to raise the debt ceiling. They passed the House bill through the lower chamber, and it has reasonable permitting reforms. It's got some modest work requirements for welfare programs. And any one of these would be a victory that Biden can cut a deal on. You also have Senator Mitch McConnell backing up Kevin McCarthy and saying that he's the one that has to do the negotiating because the Republicans control the House. So I think here it could backfire on the Biden administration to continue to predict this doom that is not foreordained by any means. Kyle, Chuck Schumer and the Democrats doing absolutely nothing to try to pass anything through the Senate, despite the fact that the, I mean, no way that it normally works, the House passes something or the Senate passes something, then the other body considers the issue, particularly on a matter of urgency like this, passes something, they work it out, they get together, they conference. They compromise, send it to the president. Obviously, the White House plays a part in negotiations. Here, Schumer's taken the no never line from the White House, not even trying to work with Republicans to capture the 10 or so votes he'd need to get to 60. And as Kate suggested, the Republicans so far aren't breaking apart. Uh, I mean, even the most moderate Republicans like Mitt Romney and others are saying, I'm backing 
McCarthy. So, you know, as long as they stick together, it seems to me that there's going to have to be some kind of negotiation. And if I were Biden, I think the most sensible thing to do is sit down, okay, okay, we'll negotiate here. You give the House Republicans some of what they passed in that bill. You, You don't have to give them everything. You say, I'll give you permitting reform, or I'll give you some kind of spending caps. The bill that the House passed would move spending for this year back to the 2020 fiscal year spending and then increase at 1% over a decade. Negotiate caps for half a decade or negotiate caps for, you know, maybe one and a half percent increase or something. Work out something that gives the Republicans uh, at least something of what they passed. And then you put it back into McCarthy's court and you say, okay, sir, we've compromised. Now you got to sell it to your members, and then he's got to see if he can get it through the House again, assuming that Schumer can get the support in the Senate. That does seem like the smartest strategy to me, because the way that President Biden is approaching this right now, he is a uniting Republicans. I think they're slow to recognize the changed context of the fact that the House has already passed a bill to raise the debt ceiling. I think that President Biden's initial strategy of going into this made sense of try to just wait around until House Republicans squabble and they can't pass any sort of bill because they can't agree with themselves. And then at the last minute, come in and say, we need to do a clean debt ceiling increase, pass it through the Senate, kick it over to the House. But now we have a situation where that kind of bill, that kind of clean debt ceiling increase can't pass the House because... A majority of the House is united around an alternative proposal with some sort of modest spending restraints. And I agree with you. The smart play, I think, for President Biden now is to agree to pieces of the House proposal and specifically the pieces that he thinks will be most divisive inside the Republican conference, throw it back over to Kevin McCarthy, and then there's still a chance that President Biden can get what he wants if Republicans can't pass that final bill, then he can come in at the last minute and again say, we need a clean debt ceiling increase. He would force McCarthy, if he can't pass it with only Republican votes, and remember, he only has that four vote majority, to be able to have to rely on Democrats to help pass it in the House. And that would be divisive within the Republican conference. But he might have to go there and they'd have a debate in the GOP about whether this is in fact a victory. I would think it would be as Kate suggested a couple of these things would be significant victories to get on the debt ceiling. One more point, Kate, I'm going to give you the last word. But when it comes to the White House calculation, if your approval rating is 37 percent, as it is in this Washington Post ABC poll, I don't think that a constitutional clash or other clash over the debt limit is something that's going to enhance your approval rating. You can blame the Republicans for it and your partisans will agree, but the majority of the American public will say, why can't you just work this out? Why are you putting the American financial system in jeopardy? Yes, Paul. I mean, remember that Joe Biden's calling card in the election was that he knew Washington and knew how to make deals and he rejected the idea that people couldn't work together. That hasn't really panned out. And my final point would be that the stuff Republicans are asking for that we've been discussing, like getting projects started faster and having a part-time work requirement on food stamps, these things poll in the 70, 80% with the electorate. They would be a really easy bipartisan victory. And it's there for the taking if Joe Biden decides that he wants it. Yeah, I think he would be smart to do it, but he's still playing brinksmanship. We'll see. The one other thing, Kyle, and I'm going to break my word that she has the last word. I'm going to give it to you because I just want to bring up this one thing that's introduced into this debate, which is suddenly the 14th Amendment, which the Constitution could be used as a catalyst for the administration to dodge Congress. And Section 4 of the 14th Amendment says that the U.S. debt, quote, shall not be questioned, unquote. Could that be used to uh, unilaterally pay interest on the debt without raising the debt ceiling? Well, if you're putting it that way, then yes, because that suggests that the Constitution requires the White House to prioritize the net interest on the debt. And just to put some numbers on this, I have the Congressional Budget Office report on the first six months of fiscal year 2023 up here and outlays $3.1 trillion net interest on the public debt, $308 billion. So if President Biden wants to take that route, 
it seems to me that what the 14th Amendment would mean is that you have to pay that $308 billion before you do other government spending. And I think he's stretching it if he wants to say that the 14th Amendment means that we can do everything else in the discretionary budget and also pay the net interest on the debt, because then he's talking about spending money that Congress has not appropriated. And to my eye, this is just the latest gimmick, the latest last Hail Mary chance to get out of this corner that he's in. And in past debt ceiling debates, we've heard about the trillion dollar coin. I think this is just the latest trillion dollar coin, and it will obsess the press corps and the chattering class for about three weeks until people decide it's not really a viable option. Well, I don't know. My friend David Rifkin, the constitutional lawyer, says In fact, the 14th Amendment does protect debt payments, and the administration is, in fact, obliged to uh, repay the debt first. We'll see if they go there. It's never been litigated, obviously, so it would be of some considerable note, and you wouldn't want to test that with a risking default, so you'd want to make sure that you have some kind of legal support for it in advance from the Office of Legal Counsel of Justice, et cetera because it is taking some risk. And that's why Tim Geithner, when he was Treasury Secretary in 2011, ruled it out as a possibility playing the 14th Amendment card. But it's interesting to me that neither Biden nor Yellen, when asked about it in recent days, has ruled it out. I don't disagree that there may be some effect of the 14th Amendment. What I'm trying to argue is just that that effect should be that the payments on the debt would be prioritized above refundable tax credits and other spending like that. I don't think that it would mean that the president has some secret constitutional authority to spend more money than Congress has appropriated. Well, it would be repaying the debts of the United States. I think this is where the rub would be. The the idea would be you don't have to appropriate the money because it's about the debt ceiling per se. The money is coming in in terms of revenue and how do you prioritize those payments. So I'm not so sure it's an appropriations issue so much as a legal point if you want to take it to that. I guess my bottom line would be we shouldn't be playing this game because, in fact, the president should sit down and negotiate something with the House, as has happened many, many times before. All right, Kate, thank you. Kyle, thank you. Thank you all for listening. We're back every day on Potomac Watch, and we'll be back again Tuesday with more comment on the White House meeting. We'll see what happens then. Thanks for listening.